up guys welcome back to yet another riveting episode here on the avion awesome channel so by now you guys already know the deal Eloy did have to finally go home and that's really sad uh that was a very emotional moment uh for the both of us it was not a uh you know it, it just wasn't something that we actually wanted to do but a lot to be explained first things first <laughs> i kind of feel like i just have to kind of get this out of the way for some reason but uh i'm happy to report that even though she is gone she you know went back home um everything is good the other good thing is that you know she did make it home just fine she she got there in about five or six days so uh, she drives really slow like I do, does about 60, 65 the whole way. You know, she doesn't do any sort of like crazy travel days or anything like that. You know, slow, steady pace. That way, if anything goes wrong, you've got plenty of time to stop and make adjustments and all that type of thing. But one of the main reasons why she had to go home was uh, she had business to take care of. You know, like her license was going to be expiring really, really soon. Of course, everyone that does any kind of RVing almost anywhere knows that uh, the Canadians, they always leave super duper early. Um, they're, they always tend to go home because they don't wanna uh, lose out on the uh, healthcare benefits. And if you're out of the country for longer than a certain amount of days, roughly about six months, then you could accidentally get, you could cut your own self off. And most Canadians just aren't willing to do that. And then the next biggest reason uh, that she had to go back was uh, she had to file for, you know, unemployment benefits because with this whole coronavirus thing going down, uh, the schools were going to start closing. They were going to start shutting down and they weren't going to reopen for the rest of the school year. So she thought that, and originally that she would go back home and, um, you know, maybe work for a month or two before the end of the school year and then draw unemployment uh, throughout the summer like most teachers do and then that whole thing. Holy crap, you gotta, you gotta see the sunset. Oh my God, look at that. You all see that going, oh, it's so pretty today. Ah. Oh, so beautiful. Anyway, um, but yeah, those were the main reasons why she ended up going back. Uh, I know that a lot of people <laughs> had asked had suggested, Mark, you should chase after her and y'all should just stay together, continue the adventure. You know, I might have even have liked that idea at one point, but the reality is I don't have my passport and I've never had one. Like in my almost 43 years on this planet, I have never once applied for a passport and I've even been to Canada once. I'm not really sure how that worked out or how that happened, but when I was a teenager, I went up to Canada went to Toronto and then went sailing for three days on Lake Ontario and ultimately ended up in uh, Niagara Falls, New York. Um, yeah, never, <laughs> never got my passport. So I started looking into it. And of course, you know, when government shuts down, boy, everything starts to shut down. So I looked and I was looking really hard at all the fine print because sometimes, I mean, you really got to dig in the details and yeah, they were talking that yeah, you're not going to get your passport. Like, if you apply for it right this second, in mid-April, you are not going to get your passport for probably four to six months. Not only are they still processing the ones before the shutdown, they've got all the ones to process after the shutdown. And really, just about anything involving uh, the government just moves incredibly slow. So, you know... <sighs> By the time I would get it, by the time I would finally have it, uh, it would be just about the time that our initial plans is that she would be back here in the United States. So it, it just didn't make any sense to, to pursue it. But I'm going to go ahead and apply anyway so that, you know, should I happen to get lucky or something, then I can go wherever I want, whatever country that may be. I also want to thank a lot of you guys, man. Like, I don't know what it is about this uh, story that I've been trying to tell, our story, our story in particular, but you guys have responded really well to it. Uh, I think that, 
you know, you guys really enjoyed, you know, our travels, our adventures together, uh, our hikes, uh, some more than others, uh, some videos that we did, did better than others, but, uh, I really do. I want to thank you guys for, for doing, uh, all the engagement that I got from those videos because I did, I put a lot of heart and soul into those videos and it's really nice to have that kind of payback, you know, in the form of, you know, thumbs up and comments and stuff like it seems so trivial to someone that doesn't do YouTube uh, or isn't a creative. But I mean, when you create things, when you're an artist or a painter or a musician or something, the only thing you want in the whole world is to either have people see or hear the stuff that you've done and to give you some feedback, whether that be good or bad, just knowing that you're uh, engaging an audience. It makes a big difference. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update, but uh, you know, this journey that I've been on the last, you know, three months, I, it didn't start off this way. This is not how I had originally planned for this trip to go. Um, this trip was just supposed to be me and Duncan, uh, you know, getting out here in the middle of uh, the desert Southwest, uh, explore some interesting things that I'd never seen before, always heard about, you know, that type of thing. I, I just, this is not the trip that I had planned for myself. Um, I came out here with every intention of just rolling solo, hanging out, drinking some beer with some, some cool people, you know, campfires, you know, going on some interesting hikes, seeing some interesting sights, but you know, coming out here and meeting someone, especially someone who I was really contentious with at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, this is just not the trip I had planned for myself. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either. I mean, I think that you and me as human beings, we really should be more open, open to the universe. Like you, you, you don't know what is in store. Um, and I was really resistant at first. I was just like ha arm's length, you know, just no, I'm, I'm heartbroken. And, you know, cause me and Deborah had just split up. So I just, I wasn't in that mindset of meeting someone and potentially, you know, uh, hanging out or, or, or anything like that with somebody. So, you know, I was very standoffish and I was just pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, and then, you know, you just, you know, it's just like, everyone deserves love and everyone deserves to experience good times with amazing people. And if you're not open to it, if you're trying to protect yourself, I mean, that's what kind of sprung the, the whole idea of the video fear and love. And if you haven't seen that video yet, you can check it out right here. But you know, when you're fearful, you pull back from life. And when you're in love, you open yourself up to it. So I wanted to open myself up to it. Um, and just let, let come what may. I really do appreciate all the, uh, feedback, all the questions, the comments, everything. It's been absolutely phenomenal. It's been fantastic. Um, I've been enjoying this spot for, uh, probably the last two weeks, roughly a little bit, a little bit longer than two weeks, but the extraordinarily hot weather is on its way. Very, very hot weather. We're going to be mid 90s and stuff over the next week and a half or so. So I'm going to be heading up into the mountains to try and avoid some of that. At any rate, guys, like I said, thanks again so much for watching and hanging out with me on yet another riveting episode here on the Avion Awesome channel. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I'll see you guys again on the next one.